And obviously, I get, it's difficult to draw that line. Yeah, but um, it's obviously not all the way over yeah. at one end of the spectrum. So again, like I said previously, I can't explain to you the whyness of it. But what we're taught in Islam is God teaches us to judge by the apparent and to apply the laws that He has legislated. So, for example, if somebody is uh, in a business and they want to open up a chicken farm they want to open up a vegetable store they want to do whatever you do what you want with your life okay you want to marry whoever you want to marry you marry whoever you want to marry so islam doesn't get involved in those things but things to do with uh public the public interest when it comes to the uh, the moral side of things or the political side of things islam has certain restrictions which restrict the freedoms which are natural in a liberal state. Now, I'm not going to shy away uh, that there is a direct contradiction between what we are used to growing up in a liberal state and what Islam teaches. And people, even Muslims who are brought up in these liberal states, they may even feel uncomfortable at those things. But the fact is, those are legislated, we and believe, by God. Uh, so, for example, you may get some liberal minded Muslims who are like, hijab is a choice. And Islam says, no, in a Muslim uh, empire, hijab is not a choice, it's state enforced. Likewise, um, for example, a woman is supposed to wear modest clothing. And say a woman says, no, uh, for example, according to what you said, let people learn by their mistakes. Islam doesn't allow that freedom. What about the other way around though? Should men be modest as well? Should men wear something which is, you know, a bit more covering? Yeah. No. So men are not allowed to, for example, flaunt, right? Men are not supposed to attract the other gender by, uh, as you know in Islam, it's all about marriage. You can't have boyfriend, girlfriend and stuff. So men have those uh, uh, restrictions as well, but they don't have it to the extent that the women do. So the woman has to wear a hijab, a man does not. Why is that? That's just God's law. So the other that, thing is, that, look, that's the point for me where I start to think, you know, you know, I want to let, I want to let my girlfriend you know, do, do what she wants. You know, um, I, I think, you know. So, so, and, and that's that's the thing where Islam contradicts human <laughs> desires. So. One of the things in Islam which, is that... Which that, really puts your... Which is about how much trust you have in God then. Yeah. Rather than what you think is right personally. Yeah. So for example, as a man, you could make yourself look more attractive if you were clean shaven or if you had a, you know, a goatee or whatever, right? But if you grow a beard, right, it makes you less attractive as a man. It can do, right? Also, as a man, you want to, uh, and I'm going by societal standards because sometimes beards are really fashionable, sometimes they're not. As a man, you want to go into business, right? You can't in Islam take out a loan on interest. Interest is forbidden. So for example, I'm paying rent. I'm in Islam, Islam forbid, forbids me from getting a house on interest, getting a house on mortgage, which puts me in financial more difficulty than I would otherwise. But how would like how would you get a student loan to go to university? Surely that's more harmful than good. No, but there, student loans you, are different. Can you can you well they didn't have student loans when the Quran was written though, right? Like, can you um can you weigh up certain laws of the, when you're trying to apply uh, the laws of God in your own life? Can you weigh up one law against another law and say, I think, you know, which contradict each other in a certain situation? I mean, like, you say, yeah, say so that's where we would go to scholars. Like, an average Muslim doesn't do that. Okay. But you see, the Islamic model, remember I said to you the vase and the two faces looking at each other? It's a paradigm shift. So, the Islamic economic model is based upon spending, not saving. So, in an economy in which you have interest, if you take your money and you stake it, you get free money in your way, you get interest. Islam teaches you to spend money to make money, and also their state-enforced charity. So anybody who... Zakat. Zakat, yeah. Do you know a lot of stuff? So. A lot of people will say that goes against my freedom, it goes against this, it goes against that. But the thing is, there's many things in Islam which are, they don't 
uh, they, they're not in conflict with what we want. But there's some things in Islam which are like, for example, you're a young man, you're 18 and stuff. Now, when you're a young man, you see an attractive woman walking past, you naturally look. That's what young men do. Or, you know, like, for example, young people, they have boyfriends, they have girlfriends, they have these things, or they go partying, they go drinking. Uh, you have indulgences like, uh, you know, alcohol and weed and, you know, these types of things. But these fun things, Islam says you're not allowed to have them. Again, and it's very difficult sometimes. And if it wasn't, like, for example, when I was growing up, if it wasn't for my love of God, these things would overwhelm me. But that's the thing, Islam teaches you to not be a slave to your own desires, not be a slave to society, but be a slave to God. To love God more than you love yourself. Yes. Okay. And a lot of people find that very hard. Yeah, no, but I think, I think that that kind of gets to the core of a lot of where, you know, your, you know, Augustine's like, slight disagreements were, you know. Yeah. Uh, ours were more kind of personal-centered and yours were more god -centered. Anyway, it's been a pleasure to talk it to you. It was. Great. Have a nice day. Uh, we're here every Sunday, so join anytime you can. Great. Uh, Ray you and your friends Augusta. Augusta. Yeah. Brother, how you doing? My name's Faisal. I watch a lot of your videos online. Um, I'm not here to debate you like that. Okay. I was here to... you know, I just we just want to go pray. You know, come with us. Yeah, we're going to. We will walk. Let me just see. Oh yes. Thank you for starting the conversation.
Thanks guys! <laughs> <laughs>